So Netflix is losing a lot of money. And Elon Musk blames it on the woke virus. I don't think it's entirely accurate, but it does play a part. So first of all, it would be ignorant to ignore the other factors of why Netflix is losing so much money. The first one being the fact that there are more streaming services now. So in the beginning, when it was just Netflix, a lot of people found it convenient to pay a subscription fee in order to get Netflix. But now you got Amazon, you got Disney, you got like so many other options and they all have different exclusives. So now it's not just one subscription. You have to pay so many that a lot of people just don't want to. Another reason is the fact that the cost for the subscription is going up. And the fact that they are trying to get it so that you can't share passwords, which is something that Netflix actually initially wanted people to do. It was like, oh, the magic of Netflix is that you can share your password with other people. And now they're like, oh, we need to make sure that people don't share passwords. So, okay, well, you know, like you're going to upset people who started using the service because of that. But with that out of the way, the woke mind virus, as Elon Musk calls it, is definitely true. I mean, they, they have made so many movies that are unwatchable. I mean, for example, there is a movie that they're making now about the experience of a pregnant transgender man. How many people legitimately are excited to see that? I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I haven't seen it. But, like, how many people are like, oh, my God, I can't wait for Friday because we're going to see the pregnant transgender man movie. I really need to see it. Oh, my God, I'm stuck in traffic. The pregnant transgender man movie is on Netflix, and I, I'm going to miss it. How many people act like that? Seriously. Right? So if you're investing money into movies that have a political message... But, you know, like, they're not that entertaining to get the audience's attention. Like, no one is going to be upset if they miss that movie. Well, then you're doing it wrong. You're absolutely doing it wrong. I'm not saying you shouldn't have, like, one or two political movies if you want. Like, fine. But how many? Like, when, when all of them or the overwhelming majority of them are like that. I mean, uh, AJ, uh, and, um, AJ and the Queen. Right, it's it's about a kid with a transgender drag queen. I don't know what the fuck is that about. Like, I saw just the uh, the, the 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 title and the trailer, and I'm like, why would I watch that? You know, I mean, fine, have it, but I'm not going to to watch it. It's there. How many people do you think relate to that? How many people want to watch that? And and then it's like the the bad takes, like He Man and the Masters of the Universe. Like, how much money did you spend in order to do a bait and switch? Like, people go there and they think, okay, well, we're going to see He-Man and the makers of the universe. And instead, you give them something else. Why couldn't you just make Tila then? Why couldn't you just make Tila? It's like, oh, because you, you want to use the IP in order to attract people and then lie to them. Like, well, why would you want to do that? Why do you want to lie to people? Why do you think they're going to trust you if you lie to them? It, it makes absolutely no business sense, in my opinion. Like, you're ruining your brand by doing that. That's what you're doing. If I were to buy Pepsi, and, and I open the bottle, and it's not Pepsi, it's something else, I feel lied to. Why would I keep buying from that company if it does it again and again? It's just one example with He-Man, but they, they keep doing the bait and switch thing. So, why do you think people will watch you? And the woke thing, like, what, what we're talking about is something that I discussed on my channel... Is the fact that every single TV show nowadays needs to fit the checkbox in order to be acceptable. Like, art is coming from an assembly line, and if it doesn't have all the requirements, then it's not good art. So every single show needs to have gay people in it, needs to have people of color in it. I mean, The Witcher, right? The Witcher, a European story from medieval, inspired from medieval Europe, you put black people there without making any sense. Like, it's fine if you were to use The Witcher and explore a continent within The Witcher universe that does have black people in it, and we could see their culture and the type of monsters that are on that continent. That would have been interesting. No, instead you just throw some black people there. And everyone pretends, well, that they were always there. In, in a world, in a fictional world that has no transportation, it doesn't have airplanes, it doesn't have uh, the, the power to just go from one continent to another... Why would you do that, right? Now, of course, The Witcher is not really that bad of a TV show. It's just because the, the actor, uh, Henry Cavill, is using his best in order to carry that show. And he actually said that he intervened several times in order to get that show popular. So that is why it's successful. If you, if you removed Henry Cavill from it, it would be an unsuccessful show. 
Like, it's successful despite the wokeness, not because of it. Like, that's another thing, you know, like, how many people legitimately like the wokeness? I mean, to me, again, but, but this is because I have this channel and I constantly analyze TV shows and whatnot. I'm a little bit affected. Like, when I watch a show and, and I see something in it, I'm like, is this there because of the story or is it there because the corporates require the checkbox? So, so I, I'm kind of getting this immersion-breaking aspect every time I see the wokeness. But the main problem with the wokeness, and, and the reason why it makes shows uninteresting, is if anyone remembers The Batman, there was this massive article criticizing that in the first seconds of The Batman, you have an Asian man, which is chased by a couple of criminals, and Batman saves him. And they view that as um, promoting violence against Asians. And I'm like, are you fucking insane? Are, are you mentally challenged to say something like that? I mean, it's Batman, right? It's Gotham City. It's a dangerous city. It shows a man that's being in danger so that Batman can rescue him. So that the plot can happen. So that drama can exist on the screen. But no, because these people, they do not believe in relatability, right? Because relatability is like you relate with the guy that's being chased. And you like the Batman for saving that guy. So you would, in, in a, such a situation, you relate to how nice it feels to, to be rescued by someone when thugs are chasing you, right? But that is relatability. No, they go for representation. Representation means that because that character is Asian, he represents all Asian people. And what the writers are trying to say is that Asian people are victims. So that is how they think. And because they think like that, you can't have interesting storylines because like whatever whatever you have like a minority on the screen you need to treat them with gloves you need to make sure that they aren't in any danger that they don't die like for example in the 100 because one of the gay characters died they started harassing the person who made the film they started harassing him on twitter um hashtag bury our gays and whatnot because for them it's not a character it, it is a representation so because of that, you can't create interesting plots, right? Like every single character that's representation needs to be uh, in, in a perfect environment without suffering any hardships, without suffering any drama. And then you get Rey from Star Wars and people call it a Mary Sue because she doesn't go through any hardships because had she gone through hardship, that would be the misogyny. Misogynismo, so you can't. So yeah, like the woke virus is killing movies. Uh, Netflix does a lot of political activism rather than focusing on what it's supposed to do, which is entertainment. People are watching something else. They're, they're, I, I mean, look, the, the perfect example. The perfect example. Well, name me the most successful thing on Netflix. Squid Games. What does it mean? Korea, right? Very diverse, but they don't do the representation shit. They don't do the mind virus wokeness bull crap. It's just something that's meant to be entertaining. And it has political overtones, but it, not, it doesn't stuff them down your throat. It's not, it's not trying to stuff the message down your throat. It, does, it doesn't say that if you're a capitalist person, you're an evil person. So that's why Netflix is losing money.